So, uh, hello, uh, thank you for coming. We are uh, going to give a talk about, uh, we're going to give a technical overview of Tails. Uh, that's Kurono in Trigeri, and I'm Biting Bird. Um, what? Normal? So, we are all Tails contributors in different fields. Um, I don't do technical things. Uh, Intrigeri is uh, the one of the oldest Tails contributors, and Corona contributes since uh, some years now. Yeah, two years. So, TAILS is the acronym of the Amnesic Incognito Live System. And here is a nice URL where you can have all the information. So, it's a live operating system. It works on almost any computer, except ARM. And it boots off a DVD or a USB stick. And theoretically from SD card too, but it doesn't work very well. Uh, so, the focus of our distribution is privacy and anonymity. So, it allows the user to use the internet anonymously, um, and also when there are censorship to circumvent it. So, all the connections to the internet go through Tor, which is an anonymization network. Uh, and the, so that's the first big picture, uh, big uh, feature of Tails. And the second one is that there's no trace on the computer you're using, so that um, after you use it, nobody can see that you've used the computer. So um, if somebody were to grab your computer and search for it, they would not know what you have done. Uh, yeah, unless you ask for it explicitly, messaging and more. And we have also a lot of uh, desktop and uh, data producing tools uh, because some people, some users use it to write books, arti uh, news articles, video and such things. And they want to be able to create such documents uh, without being traced. So, does it work? So, we have a very good um, report, not from our user, actually, from our, you know, the people we are supposed to protect against. So, the NSA says uh, that it's a pain in the ass. And so, when the NSA says you're making their life harder, Somehow, you're doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess you can uh, imagine who the famous Tails user who gave us access to the documents where they say that. And there's also Bruce Schneier who says uh, he uses Tails. So, not, uh, not bad. So, what are our goals? We took a stance in the beginning of Tails that it was not really common back then to have usability as a security feature because Uber geeks were already able to have secure communications and the thing is privacy is not an individual matter, it's a collective matter. Everybody needs to have privacy and uh, new users and non-geek users had no way of having access to those because the tools existed but they were they had no user interface or they were really hard to configure so we designed a system that gives a quite good level of security with a quite good level of usability and lots of the time people ask us why we don't include more security feature, and we have to make a balance between security and usability, because if it's really secure but nobody can use it, 
then it doesn't bring anything. So it makes security accessible for most people. Another important point in our project is to have a very small delta to our upstream. So our upstream, uh, main upstream being Debian, and we try to not diverge too much from it. Uh, so because the more you do things differently, the more work you have to maintain. It's not, the work is not the f work of doing, implementing something once. It's the work of maintaining on the long term. Uh, and there were a lot and a lot of other security distribution, and there are still a few others, but most of them have a very short lifespan. Um, because uh, to maintain, I mean, it's a distribution, and we're not, we're a very tiny team compared to Debian, but we're a team. And lots of other privacy distribution where either one person or very tiny, tiny teams, and that didn't make outreach to be joined by more people. Uh, most other privacy distribution don't, didn't uh, take into account the maintenance, maintenance uh, work and the user support, because even if we try to make it usable, it's still a lot of work to teach the users how to use it and to document how you use to use it. Also, if you want to start such a project, you need to have a long-term commitment. And to remember to avoid the symptom of not invented here. Uh, it's quite common to try to do something that does exactly what you want, but sometimes it's best to find an existing pro uh, software that does something close enough and to, the, to make the new features you want in it or use it as it is. So we are trying to do most of our work, well, at least a good part of our work upstream. So we did Aparmor. Uh, in Debian specifically, there's an Aparmor team, an anonymity tools team, and an OTR team who work on things that we use in Tails. Uh, Libvirt, Seahorse, Tor, and Puppet are other projects uh, we contributed to in order to, instead of implementing what we needed in Tails, we did it upstream and it took longer and it took longer to uh, fall down to us, but so it's maintainable. When we finally have the new features, uh, we have no work of keeping the new features. So as a result, we have really little Tails-specific code we mostly do glue work between the code we take from our upstreams. Uh, and we do a lot of social work. We talk to upstream, we spread the word, we say, oh, that would be great if somebody were to work on that. Uh, and we find the people that have the right skills to do the work where it should be done when it's not in tails. Uh, we have a very slow rhythm uh, because we work in Debian, so we have to wait until the next Debian version is released to see the work we've done in Tails. For example, uh, the Aparmo I mentioned earlier, we did it in Debian, so uh, for two years there was work going on in Debian that was not visible in Tails. But we finally have it. Um, and uh, Tails is still alive because it's maintainable. So, implementation details. So that's where I give the micro. So, uh, talking about the implementation, uh, we have to say that um, uh, Tails is like a, an implementation, or at least the first implementation of a, a design that we have called the privacy-enhancing life distribution. We can use it in, the, in that link. 
uh, the idea with that document was to, to define like a, of, a set of features that uh, any distribution that would like to, to enforce security and privacy and uh, anonymity for the user will have to, to, to have. Uh, as I said, Tails is the, the first implementation of, of this document. Uh, of course, is, as you know, maybe uh, this is uh, based on, on Debian. Uh, now, currently, it works uh, over Debian BC, WC. And now we are uh, migrating to GC and we try to do in the in the next months. Um, so what's the main software that runs on, on, on Tails? Of course, we use uh, Tor, uh, the Tor browser and Genome. And Tor, as probably you know, this is uh, the um, anonymity tool that allows the people to connect to, to the internet and to redirect the traffic between different uh, uh, servers and uh, in an encrypted way. So it allows to stay uh, or to hide your, your location. Um, and the Tor browser is this uh, tool that allows to, to use uh, uh, Tor in an easy way, it, like in a, in a very convenient way. Uh, only uh, you have to install the, the browser and, and that's it. So uh, talking about the features of uh, Tails, the, what, uh, we said before that uh, the, the idea is to use the internet anonymously. Uh, so the idea is that uh, for all the software that we have installed in Tails, we block all the connections that are not going to, to through Tor. Everything that tries to reach the internet that is not being by Tor is blocked. And we try to... Uh, uh, have like a very good configuration for uh, the tools that we ship that uh, so they can connect uh, through the Tor network and it's uh, almost uh, invisible for the user so the user doesn't have to, uh, to, to care about who is going to the internet. He can be sure that everything is going to Tor and so he's uh, protected. Um, we have an alternative to, to Tor that is called uh, I2P, which is does something similar with a different technology, it's a, a different architecture. Uh, this is not enabled by default. The user, if the user wants to use it, uh, he, he has to, to enable. Um, and we have a, a user case that sometimes the user is like, in, let's say, in a hotel or in a metro station and he wants to connect the internet, but he cannot use Tor immediately and he has to connect to a a captive portal, then we have a uh, unsafe browser that allows the user to to to, uh, to connect direct, directly to, to the internet, but it has a lot of, let's say, signals and labels to, to uh, say that you are not secure in, in that way. So, uh, uh, Tails, uh, the process of installation of Tails was done before, like, like very in a very manually way. We have like a, a, a lot of documentation about it, but uh, now we have a Tails installer uh, that currently is working only inside Tails, and but no, and we are working to to create like a different version for the uh, several uh, systems. For example, we are almost done with the Debian. Uh, version, um, but we also want to, to have like a, an Ubuntu version, even a, a, a Windows version, so it is, gets very, very easy to, to install Tails. Um, uh, we are like uh, trying to, to convert this uh, software, uh, which is writing in Python, to uh, use GTK3 and UD2. Uh, so So another of the important feature of, of, of Tails that was uh, commented before is that the idea of we don't want to, to leave any trace in the computer. So uh, basically, we don't write anything, anything in, the, in the hard uh, drive, in the disks, at least in, in, not in the, in the non-removable uh, disk. Uh, yes, when, when the, the Tails is running and it is shooted down and, uh, or the USB stick where it is installed, that is most of the case, is taken off of the, of the computer. So the idea is that we, we uh, whip the memory and uh, erase everything that is, that, that is there, like uh, keys or whatever uh, sensible, uh, sensitive information that is in there. We try to, to delete it. And we use 
For that, we are using uh, this package that, that is in Debian, the secure delete, and more specifically, the, the tool that is called uh, SDMEM for, for that. So, uh, uh, talking about, so the, the idea is that we don't want to, to leave any trace in the computer, but sometimes the user needs to store some information, yeah, and if they are using tails inside a USB stick, so we are providing the possibility to, to store some information inside the, the USB stick in, in one partition. We, we are using for that looks, and uh, we are using an encrypted uh, GPT partition we, that we call test data. Um, and uh, yeah, the idea is that we are storing there some information that is important for the user, like the, the keys for the uh, email uh, client or uh, things like that. Um, we are using the, the dmcrit for that, and we are using the, the for the file system x x4, x4. Um, yeah, then the backend is implemented in live boot, and the 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 the, the, the GUI part of the of the of the tool is uh, written in, in pair. Uh, it's using GTK, uh, GTK3 at, at the moment. Uh, so. Um, even if we are running a live distribution and in a, when it is running from the USB stick, uh, we would like to provide uh, incremental upgrades. So when there are security updates or even features upgrades that we want to provide to the user, it, it is possible uh, for, uh, for him or for her to do it. Uh, there is, you can see in the leak, there is a design document uh, for that. Uh, yeah, again, only possible when the user is in the uh, USB stick. Um, we are using a, an, the incremental grade kit. And when we try to resolve like the uh, overlapping uh, file system stuff, we are using a squash, a squash FS stacking uh, for, to resolve these this upgrades. So, um, we, this is maybe one of the areas that we need to work uh, more in uh, is the in the application isol isolation. For the moment, we choose uh, App Armor, which is like the the most uh, maintaining and the the best supported in, in Debian. Uh, but for the moment, we are only supporting file access isolation because there are some patches that we need and they are not get there in the kernel. Um, we have to, to, to make like some hacks to, to make it work with, with the live distribution. Um, and for the moment, we are uh, iso uh, providing isolation with our armor for, for several uh, tools in Tails. For example, the Tor browser, which is maybe Tor, the Tor browser and Tor, we, we have the, the biggest uh, Surface of attack, we really try to do uh, a good work protecting uh, only in this moment for the file access, uh, but also we are provi providing uh, isolation for, for PG, NetBeans, and Totem, Vidalia, and others. So, uh, for the build and the test system, um, we have this uh, the the GIF repo that you can access in in, in the link or take take a look. Uh, for building tests, we are using Vagrant. Um, we have now a automated uh, automated and uh, uh, build and, and tests, which the the user can can do in in the, their own computer. Uh, but we we also have this uh, set of servers in our infrastructure that uh, we are using to, to make it automatically, because we every time more and more we have a, a more often a, a release a, a, of new versions, so we have to do it in an automatic way. Um, for that, we are using uh, several tools, for example, SQL, Libbeer, and Cucumber, and uh, if, you, if you want to see this working, don't miss the the demo the next Friday, Friday that uh, Intrigue is, is going to, to show. So, uh, for 
Well, as I, 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 we have explained, we have several challenges, especially this thing of cadence and popularity because, uh, yeah, this last year we maybe have reached like the uh, hype for several reasons, several uh, media news or things like that. Uh, so now we are trying to release uh, every six weeks. And so it's, it's really a lot of work for, 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 the, for the people that, that we have. Uh, and we are not having like 14,000 boots every day, which is uh, almost three times more than two years ago. And of course, for this task and uh, yeah, uh, maintaining an operation system is something which requires a lot of work. So we have limi limited resources and time, and uh, yeah, we have a really small uh, team compared with the uh, amount of work we, we have to, to, to make. Uh, for example, if we have done like the 3,500 commits, but all, uh, more than 15 people in the last, in the last six months, uh, which is a, a lot, really a lot of work, and yeah, we need uh, more more uh, people working with, with us. So, yeah, that's it from my side. So I'm going to talk a bit about uh, what you are going to do in the next two years. Uh, this is a quite fresh roadmap. We had a previous one for the last two years that we mostly completed. So uh, month <coughs> last month, uh, a bunch of Tails contributors met for a week and we had a look and tried to see what was most important for us to do in the next years. So first of all, we want to complete the port of taste to Debian Jesse, of course. Um, the ETA currently is early 1960, uh, 20, uh, 2016. As always, it's been almost done for month and month, but between almost done and ready to ship in production for actual users, there are sometimes a little bit of difference. We have quite a few ambitions in terms of hardening. Um, that is, <coughs> we want to protect our users better against uh, attacks, be them targeted or not targeted. The thing is, the more Tails is being used by actual people, the more it gets popular, the more it gets known and under the media spotlight, spotlight and also the more it gets high profile users, let's put it this way, then the more it becomes an interesting target for whoever would like to cause trouble to the people who are using Taze. So it's getting more and more important for us. I'm not going to go through every, every line on this line, just we'll go through it quickly and give you an overview of the main fields and topics we want to work on. We have already a quite international audience, which is good. Uh, the custom software and strings we ship in Tails is already translated like in 20, 15, 20 languages, which is very good. But for in some situations, it's not so good because for example, if your internet connection is being censored or if you have uh, if you live in a place like uh, England, some places in England or Germany or other countries where you cannot easily access Tor, then you have to use pluggable transports or Tor bridges to be able to connect to Tor. And for now, for example, you have to enter this information, the configuration, each time you start Taze, which is clearly a pain in the ass. So this, we want to allow users to save this configuration in a persistent manner so they don't have to enter it each time. Similarly, we our website is the dark corner uh, right now of our localization efforts because it's only trans be translated in four languages, including English, which is not much and clearly not enough. 
And for to solve this problem, we are, we are in the process of setting up uh, web tools to make it easier for our translators to contribute, as opposed to the current way of translating our website, which is based on Git. And Git is not the most user-friendly tool for potential translators. As said previously, one of our main focuses is to make tails usable for as many people as possible. It's, we are already doing a quite good job at that, but there are still some what the, what the user experience people call pain points. That is, even if the process is mostly easy, it's enough that you have one pain point to block someone, and if they are blocked, they can go further. So even if the next steps would be easy, in the end, they won't be able to use Tails. So we are working with uh, user experience experts and that uh, Zach put us in touch with. Thanks a lot. And to identify these pain points and work on it and design new and better ways of getting started, started with Tails mainly, because currently that's the main pain point. People just don't manage to install it at, in the first place quite often, too often. Our user support team also has plans to make their life easier and as a consequence to improve the quality of how they deal with user requests. This implies some work on the, inf on the infrastructure side. This also implies some software development work because we are shipping a tool called Whisperback, which is uh, basically it's something like a report bag. It gathers some logs. It gives the user a template to fill in some information, what they are trying to do, what they were expecting to see, and what happened instead. And then it sends this as an encrypted email to our user support team. So there's a little bit of software development to be done there. Last month, when we had a look at the current state of things, what days look like these days, we had to make some kind of uh, hard choice. That is, we could either decide it's more or less featureful and work on polishing it, making it more solid, more reliable, or we could go into adding more and more and more features and trying to address more and more and more use cases. We decided to not go after feature bloat. We decided to, to focus on our current design goals. And so we listed a few things we want to do that we categorize as polishing, making the whole thing a, bi a bit, I don't know, polished. In the last two years, one, our main focus was improving the project's sustainability. Because, of course, it's no use of making a very good tool if it dies in two years. So we've put a lot of effort into writing automatic tests, improving our processes, doing outreach, growing the team, and so on, and so on. And we still have a bit of work to do in this area, even, even if it's not our main focus anymore. And to end with, in this uh, section, we would like to improve a bit the way we deal with money. That is, we would like to depend a bit less on government grants. Yes, we get money, we use money, we spend money. And half of it this year comes from government grants. This is something we are not totally satisfied with and would like to change. And probably it will be an incremental change, probably it will take time, so better start early. And this would also allow us more likely to have more reliable and steady sources, sources of income that is not depending on whether you'll get the next big grant or not. That's all for what are our plans for the next two years. If you want details, we have uh, more detailed uh, document with this 
with all the information I've put that include links to the actual tickets in our test tracker. And you can, of course, ask us details if you're interested in any specific part of it. Needless to say, we might not be able to do all that with the current team in the next two years. And it could be useful if more people came to help us. Now, speaking about that at DevConf puts me in kind of an awkward place. I mean, I would not feel comfortable um, asking people to work on Tails if it implies they would put less time into Debian. That's not what I'm asking. So maybe for most people in the room, you actually won't be able to contribute to Tails even if you would like very much, which I'm sure, because it would imply you do less in Debian. If, if Debian is an in, in a worse position, Tails in a worse position, Tails users are in a worse position, and the world is a worse place. But maybe you know people or go to conferences or whatever who might be interested and might have spare time or might want to switch from the crappy project or something they are working on and do something else. So I'm going to list the kind of skills we currently need the most. That is basically everything. To be honest, for the software development part, we are quite well staffed. As many free software projects, that the, the getting software developers on board is probably the easiest thing to do because the people who create the project are software developers, they know how to talk to software developers, and so on. So the skills we need most are less different skills that may be technical or maybe not, that may be social or not, that may be creative or not, and here's the list. We have pretty good uh, contributors documentation that allows people to find tasks that could achieve uh, given their existing skills or the things they would like to learn. There's a link there. And I'm going to wrap up because we don't have much time left with some contact information so this all was very fast, and if you have more questions or whatever, you can talk to us because we're here, and some of us will be here for the entire DevConf, and some more will join us in two days. And of course, we have the usual set of mailing list, IRC, website, etc., 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 and the slides are only ready online. Thank you. Uh, so I w thank you for your work on Tails. Uh, it's something that we use critically. Hi. Uh, thank you for your work on Tails. It's something that, that um, folks that I work with rely on heavily. Uh, and we would not be able to do our work without it, so that's much appreciated. Um, I saw you said people who contribute to Debian maybe can't help um, because you don't want to divert work from Debian. Um, what are ways that Debian can help Tails? What, what can we do as an operating system to make the work for on Tails uh, better, easier, um, more effective? Okay, so um, I actually gave a talk ex explicitly on this topic at the mini Conf in Lyon a few months ago, which was called How You Can Contribute to Tails by Contributing to Debian. Um, you might want to refer to the slides for details, but in short, the, we have a list of packages we rely a lot on and that need more hands, be it basic building bricks, of course, like the kernel, XORG, uh, stuff, uh, teams that are understaffed and have a hard time dealing with all the work they have to do, like the GNOME team, for example. We also have a lot of work we do, the backporting work we do, because when you implement stuff upstream first, as it's been explained already, you have to wait for it to land to Debian and maybe wait two more years. So we ship a lot of backports, so we maintain a lot of backports and we would not mind some help in that, so we can focus on 
stuff that's more tail centric and less debian centric and you know so if you're interested in doing some of this you you can talk to me in the in the next few days i'll be happy to point you to all the things um one short question um you said you know about the daily users uh, of the system how would you measure that um, without sending information through uh, a public network uh, disturbing the privacy of the user? So that's the question we have every time we give a talk, so that's okay. kind of funny. <laughs> so um, since using an outdated system is really uh, unsafe, so we really want to make sure that the users have the up-to-date version for that, at each boot, uh, when you boot Tails, it checks if there are upgrades. And we, so the statistics we have are the number of people that check for upgrades. Um, and no, it doesn't reveal information about the user. It just, um, yeah, so the, the check goes through Tor. And so it's like any connection to any other website you would do. And uh, so we only know one Tails has booted and we don't know where they were, what they're doing or anything. We just know they boot, they check for updates and that's it. I know, I know DKG already said that, but I just wanted to thank you. Your work is really, really important, and it helps a lot of people. And I just wanted to acknowledge that. Hi. Um, does it ever occur that um, in a new version of software there are new features and some of those features fall on home? Because there was an incident recently where the Chromium browser would call home to Google. In, in a new version that was pushed as a stable security update, um, it would phone home to Google, request um, some executable software for which there was no source code, uh, fortunately, in Debian, it didn't run this, but that was a close call. I wonder, um, can this be detected um, easily with automated tools, or does it involve like a manual source code audit to to check that there's nothing new like this added in a new version of a piece of software? Do you mean Tails specifically, or in general? Um, wi within Tails, do you have tools to you know detect packages filing home? Mm, we don't. We sh well, the thing is, the we ship relatively few software that talks to the network, and these ones we configure quite carefully, and except the Tor browser, basically they only get updated when every two years when we switch to the next version of Debian. So the risks are relatively low. The main potential offender would be the web browser, of course. But for this one, we are just relying on the uh, tremendous work done by the Tor Brother team. Okay, thank you. We have space for one more question, I think. And maybe I should add, uh, Tails is configured in a way when even if it was phoning home, except if it was actively looking for user-specific information in their configuration, cache files, history, something. Basically, all Tails users would be looking the same to their online server. They would be reporting back, so the risk is not that high. Well, the phoning home risk, with some limited definition of phoning home, is quite slow in Tails, or almost non-existing. Anything more deeper, would, I would call malware instead of phoning home. So privacy leak, and that's a different topic.
Well, it looks like everybody has their questions answered. So thank you for being here. And uh, let's hope we'll talk to you in the next days. And uh, thanks for your work in Debian. <laughs>